Last time I was at the seashore, I took a long walk through an area that pretty much no one goes. It's a bunch of dead wood, and I thought this would be a perfect place to find something to make lures out of. I thought maybe some driftwood or some old dead mangroves, but then I saw a coconut floating along, and I thought, okay, now that's a challenge. First challenge is getting into it. Coconuts are tough. The nut itself is like a hard shelled softball size affair that's covered with some really dense husk that I'm sawing through here. Ah, look at that. This is coconut. It is coconut meat. So if you had never seen it, there's the coconut. You see the dark hard edge. That's the actual nut. And this is a baby palm tree or baby coconut tree. And you can see where it was going to start to sort of uh, send out a sprout. Let me dig out a piece of this coconut meat and see if it's any good. It's still sweet. It's still pretty good. Got some sawdust in it though. I gotta share this with my wife, she loves this stuff. You can see how much meat there really is in there, and it's actually good meat. Unfortunately, uh, we're gonna waste most of this. I'm gonna try to figure out if I can use any of this fibery part to make a lure. Now that's gonna be <laughs> a tough thing to be able to do. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut it into wedges, and hopefully I can make uh, a lure out of it. Here's some pretty solid stuff. Uh, I might be able to do something with this stuff after all. So this is what we have to work with. Coconut, it turns out, has the density of balsa, probably a very light balsa. Uh, and there's a real difference between how tight uh, this cocoa mat material is up here where it was connected to the tree and down here where it was uh, the very tail end of this big uh, husk. I really like building lures to fish with, so this is gonna be challenging. So let me give you a closer look at this stuff and then we'll talk about a design. This is actually what they make uh, cocoa mat out of. It's that, that stuff you see lining like planters. And back in the old days, I remember my first car was a 1962 VW Beetle and it had a cocoa mat in the seats. That's what they actually used to uh, pad the seats with back in the day in those old cars. Even the Mercedes had this stuff in it. As I cut this stuff up, I was trying to kind of get a nice bulky area that I could work with. And uh, as I learned uh, the differences in the wood, I tried to get more bulk in the lower half of it because this is so soft. You can really just dig your finger in it. We're gonna have to design uh, some kind of semi-hard bodied lure that I'm actually willing to take with me on my boat and fish it. So let's go to the dry erase board. So early experimentation, uh, I came up with this little piece. And this is a piece that uh, comes from like the densest part of this. And the experiment was really just to see how I could work it. And if you take a look, you can see that I, I sanded it a little bit. And if you sand with the nap, there's actually a nap. If you sand with the nap, uh, it actually will lay down and look almost like it's sanded wood, but not quite. So I'm going to have to find a way to densify this stuff, probably soaking it with uh, uh, super glue. This thing looks something like... My intention is to make a lipped crankbait with a, a poly lip on it. I'll probably refine the tail like that, following the top contour because I want to leave that shell on there. Coming up just a little bit. I'm probably going to cut that off. And if you can imagine an eye around here somewhere and a lip somewhere in here. And we get rid of the red lines and we get kind of an idea of the look of this. 
Well, this is likely going to be sort of a sub wake. In other words, it'll be just under the surface, diving maybe a foot, foot and a half. So this angle will likely be a little bit steeper, almost wake, but not quite. Okay, so let's refine the shape. I'm going to go ahead and cut this peak off. And I know that I want to kind of follow this contour right to about here where I want to kind of refine this tail a little bit. Might go back a little farther. I don't want it too long. I'm going to leave this shell on there and then I'll try my best to sort of uh, smooth this out. I'm not sh exactly sure. This is going to cut uh, straight across here. The lure has to come down to some shape around like that. And this is going to take some real eyeballing <laughs> to get symmetry. Uh, luckily this stuff is so soft uh, I can probably uh, play with the shape with just sandpaper and not have to worry about getting a perfect cut the first cut. Alright, now for some hand shaping. Alright, I've got the general shape in. And it's going to be a little challenging to keep this shell on the outside because it's so kind of rough and uneven but I think we might be able to do it. I'm going to saturate this with super glue and then do the final sanding and hopefully a little bit of shaping. Okay so I've got the lure or soon to be lure <laughs> pretty much shaped how I want it. I still have to do some refining. If you sight down the front you can see there's a pretty good hump. Uh, I think I can get it out uh, it'll take a little more sanding. I'm trying to leave this eggshell part uh, outside of the uh, actual nut. Uh, I'm trying to keep it as intact as possible. I want that to remain looking somewhat natural. I've already tested to see how much weight I actually want in it. Uh, and I just did a, just a standard drop it in the water kind of thing. So I want it to be floating, uh, but I don't want it to be like violently coming to the surface. I want it to ease back up to the surface. I want it to stay around a foot and a half or shallower, so uh, we'll have to play with that angle just a little bit. Okay, so here's the finished shape. It looks a little rugged, but uh, you can see it's pretty symmetric and has the shape that I had planned to do back there on that dry erase board. So let's go ahead and jump into the breech and cut this lip slot. Alright, so if you can see, I've drawn a line right here uh, just to mark the perpendicular line where I'm going to cut. And then I've got the line for the angle. And what I like to do is I like to put it in a vise where this line is perfectly vertical. This way I can just put my saw blade on the vertical and just cut straight down and I know I'm getting the angle. Okay, let's see how these fibers cut. They seem to be cutting really easy. I just have to take my time so I don't really make a mess. So now what I need to do is widen this gap a little bit so I can actually fit a uh, lip in there. So this is just a broken hacksaw blade that I glued and clamped together and this should give me the width of cut. All right, that should do it. Pretty happy with the shape and the slot. In the overall look actually I'm pretty surprised I thought it was going to be a complete disaster but I think it actually is going to be uh, at least an interesting looking lure and then we'll see how it actually functions. Okay let's get this out of here. It's been about 30 minutes. I should have done it. That looks kind of cool. Kind of an interesting finish. So now before I get into the painting I need to place the weight. So here comes the scary drilling of big holes in the lure body. 
I know I've got to get this big slug in there. Uh, so that's a pretty giant hole I got to put in it. Well, this bit will do it, but golly, that's going to be a big hole. Maybe it would be better uh, with this Fossner bit. Looks like it could get ugly. Just take my time and just sort of spin this through the fibers. Okay, I'm finding that it uh, a combination of the two bits is what is doing it. After I get this drilled in, I'm going to saturate all that in there with uh, a real thin crazy glue. And that should really strengthen all these fibers so I don't end up with a lure that just wants to break in half. Okay, I've got it in there as far as I really want to drill. Now I'm going to go ahead and get this all uh, flooded with some uh, super glue. And then I'll grind this back so I can smooth it off. Then we'll do the super glue baking powder deal and we'll be ready to paint. So I've got it smoothed out and in there. Pretty happy that I, I didn't destroy the lure in the in the uh, process. But so here's what the lip will look like. It's a uh, shortened little semi square bill, and I can't really set the um, the tie eye until I have this fixed because this drills through here. So you know what? I really like the look of this natural wood and I don't want to paint over it too much. So let's do a little freestyle uh, foiling and then we'll see what we do with the rest. Okay, so I've got the lure foiled and I'm ready to paint. Uh, I'll pull the camera a little closer and then I gotta turn the air conditioner on and the compressor on. It'll just be a quick montage of the paint job. All right, so this is my plan. I'm gonna take uh, transparent black and just mist this back about a third of the way back and then come in with some opaque black right in here. I'll do the same along this edge with just the transparent black and then come in with a little blue, transparent blue right in here. And then underneath, I'm gonna come in with a transparent yellow and then red right in here. Then I'll put an eye on it, I'll put the uh, bib on and we'll give it that last clear coat and maybe we'll have some daylight to test it in the lake. So before the clear coat comes the mid coat and it's just Minwax polyacrylic and it's uh, thinned down 15% by volume and I like to spray on two coats usually does the job. Looks like it's got good coverage. Let's put it in the turner. Okay, so that should take about 30 minutes. I guess I'll grab something to eat and then I'll meet you down <laughs> at the dock. It looks like we're gonna have just about enough light to try this out. Just got it out of the UV chamber and threw on some old hooks and let's see how she works all right moment of truth <laughs> you really never know you 
guys have been making lures for a while. Kind of hard to tell what that's going to do. It looks like it's sitting right. Ooh, that doesn't look good. Um, <laughs> it's not really working right, uh, but this is where knowledge of lure action and how things um, affect it come into play. This lip, I think, is a little too aggressive, and that combined with a low set on this tie-eye, I'm going to rotate this tie-eye up so it's sitting a little more straight up. It looks like it's centered, but... We won't know that for a minute. Now that might, that might kind of sort of make up for that. There it goes. Yeah, that lip is really aggressive though. Let's see. Oh yeah, well, that's a big wobble. That'll work though. Yeah, at first it looked like it was a hopeless mistake, but it's just a little off. It's swinging wildly. I probably could move that eye a little higher. That looks pretty good. Let's see what it does. When you cast it and crank it back, it's definitely waking. Yeah, it's definitely a wake bait. I'm going to try to move that eye up a little more. I think that's as much as I can bend it. I need to take a little off this lip. But uh, for right now, let's see how it works. A little quieter. There you go. It's trying to dive now kind of cool I think it's got the kind of colors that uh, are gonna attract a bite out in the Gulf maybe even here in the lake well I was about to do my outro and I dropped the whole kit and caboodle in the water I dropped my rod reel the new lure and everything but luckily there's enough line and it's floating on top so I can sort of and like I was about to say thanks for watching don't generally do these kind of lures so if you're enjoying these kind of videos let me know and certainly if you haven't subscribed subscribe if you have questions Ask them. I try to get to everybody's questions. And I'll see you on the next video.